Contra is one of the most exciting games for the NES. It's a pulse-pumping, run-and-gun action game that can be enjoyed alone or with a friend. The game occasionally changes from a typical side-scrolling view to a pseudo-3D perspective as the player infiltrates an enemy base. The game features a ton of moving enemies on the screen, an impressive feat for an early NES title. Before it was on the NES, Contra was one of the most profitable arcade games of 1987. It was developed by Konami, who had already created many successful arcade games including Russian Attack, Jackal, and Gradius. The arcade version of Contra was very difficult. It doesn't matter how much money you put into it, you can only continue three times. Still, it was quite popular, so of course Konami wanted to create a home version for the NES. While the NES has less power than Konami's arcade hardware, they still managed to create a very impressive game. Some elements, like the ability to choose your path through the base levels, were removed, but the NES release is actually even bigger than its arcade counterpart. The story for the NES game is a bit different than the one in the arcade. The instruction manual says that aliens landed in the Amazon back in 1957, and now 30 years later the aliens have established themselves in the jungle. Known as the Red Falcon, the Pentagon senses a real threat and sends elite super soldiers Bill Riser, codename Mad Dog, and Lance Bean, codename Scorpion, to infiltrate the alien nest and eliminate the heart of the Falcon. One thing that was similar to the arcade version, the NES game is super difficult, but home players had a major advantage, the Konami code. It's impossible to talk about Contra without talking about up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A. Entering the code quickly as the title screen scrolls in will give you 30 lives, and even if you die, you'll get 30 more lives each time you continue. With that many lives, the evil Red Falcon doesn't stand a chance. The Konami code appears in a number of Konami games, and it was actually in Gradius before Contra. Entering the code while that game is paused will give you a full set of power-ups. The code was created by programmer Kazuhisa Hashimoto, who was struggling to test Gradius as he converted it to the NES from the arcade due to that game's legendary difficulty. He created the code as a way to make it easier for himself. When programmers had to convert Contra to the NES, they included the same code as an homage to Hashimoto. The code also works in Life Force, Castlevania Bloodlines, and Operation C, among many others. Contra is probably most well remembered for its two-player mode. With the Konami code giving each player 30 lives, almost anyone can beat this game by working together as a team. But the real fans know that you don't need 30 lives to beat this game. While it may seem difficult, Contra is surprisingly fair, and if you play it smart, you can definitely win on a single life. When the game released in North America in February of 1988, it was a huge success. Due to chip shortages, it was often hard to find in stores. When Contra came into stock, it sold out fast. Due to anti-violence laws in Germany, Konami changed the theme of the game to be about robots shooting at other robots and changed the name of the European release to Probotector. Shooting at human-shaped aliens is bad, but shooting at human-shaped robots is totally fine. All of that success led to sequels, and Konami released the excellent follow-up, Super C, in 1990. A third NES title, Contra Force, was released in 1992, and while it's not a bad game, it's not really Contra. 
It's actually a game called Arkhound that was rebranded to cash in on Contra's popularity. The original is still a favorite to fans and modern critics alike. When IGN released their list of the top 100 NES games of all time, they ranked Contra at number 12. Today's players that attempt this game will still have to deal with all of the challenges the NES is notorious for. One hit deaths are the name of the game here, and enemies are constantly pouring in from the sides of the screen. You'll only have three lives before it's game over. But what if I told you strategies for getting through all of Contra's difficult levels without the Konami code? What if I showed you where to find tons of weapon power-ups so you'll always know what to do if you mess up and die? And what if I showed you how to beat every boss with and without the spread gun? Even the heart of the Falcon itself? Well, on today's episode of You Can Beat Video Games, we'll learn all of that and more. If you're new to the channel, we're doing deep dives on retro video games and giving you the professional strategies that can be used by the casual gamer. Please make sure to subscribe and click the bell for notifications so you don't miss any new videos. Let's get started. Alright. Contra. This game is tough, but it's not as difficult as people think. You can use the Konami code if you need to practice, but with the strategies you're going to see here, you'll realize that you just don't need it. As we start stage one, the jungle, you want to shoot forward to take out a few enemy soldiers and then shoot down to get this M, which is a machine gun, and then hit that football that's flying through the air to get an R, which is a rapid fire enhancement. Jump from right about there and then jump again to stay up on the bridge and do the same thing to cross the second one. If you land in the water, that'll make it harder to get this S weapon, which is the spread gun, and it's the game's most powerful weapon. If you are in the water, you want the S to fly over to about here, and then you can shoot it out of the air, and you still might be able to collect it. If you didn't get the S this early on, though, there will be another one in this level, so don't worry about it. If we shoot downward, we can release an F power-up, the F is not as good as the S, but if you don't have any guns, you might want to try it. It does give you a wider area of attack, but it's slow and it doesn't deal as much damage over time as your standard gun does. If you stay far backwards and crouch down, you can take out these turrets in a position where they won't be able to damage you. Try crouching in front of that one if you're worried about it. And this is that other spread gun. You can just walk off the ledge there and you'll be able to collect it. And right here, you want to make sure to get this R, so be ready to shoot it. That L is the laser, and that is not going to be as good as your spread gun, so you don't want to pick it up. With the R on the spread gun, we can shoot very quickly, and we now have the ultimate weapon combination. We want to try to hold this as long as we can, but if you do die, I will show you how to beat the bosses in this game without the spread gun. Head down here and we'll arrive at our first boss. You want to stand up and shoot the soldier at the top, and then you can just crouch down here and take out these cannons. The cannons can't reach you back here, and some of your shots will actually hit the power core, which is the only part of the wall that you actually need to destroy. Now, if you just have your regular gun, make sure to take out this turret, and then you're going to want to jump to take out the soldier on the top. So make sure to get rid of him, and then step down onto this platform and stay on the far left of it. From this position, the cannon won't be able to reach you, and you can easily shoot out both cannons. Then just duck down and shoot through the core, and we'll be on to Stage 2. Stage 2 is base number 1, and this is our first pseudo 3D area. To get through each room, you need to shoot out any gems in the back wall. That will blow the wall up and allow us to move on. Shooting the red enemies will spawn power-ups, like that one gave us an R, which would be handy if you missed the one in stage one. Head on over to the left here and shoot out that gem. 
and if you duck down in these rooms, you'll be able to dodge any enemy gunfire, and you'll also need to do it to shoot any gems that are below. You don't want to press up though, that'll push you into the electrical field, which won't kill you, but it will stun you and it could lead to your death. In this room you'll need to duck down to shoot those mines that roll forward, and if you stand slightly off center, that turret at the top won't be able to hit you. Same theory here, destroy the turret on the right, and then if you stand slightly off center to the left, neither one of those guns will be able to hit you, and you'll be able to destroy the large gem and head to the boss. This boss is called Ocular Fire, and we need to destroy the four glowing power cores to reveal the main boss, but before we do that, it would be good to take out these two spread turrets so that you don't have to deal with them when you're fighting the main eye part. If you just stand in the middle and shoot your spread upwards, you'll probably hit most of the projectiles that this thing shoots, and you'll be able to easily destroy it. Now, if we don't have the spread gun, the same theories apply. You want to stand slightly to the left here where this spread turret won't be able to hit you, and take it out. And then we're going to destroy the spread turret on the right in the same way. So stand to the left of it, right in this spot, and you'll be able to shoot it. Then we'll take out the two cores in the middle. And you just want to stay mostly in the middle and shoot at the eye. You should hit most of the projectiles, but if one is coming towards you at a bad angle, you do want to move out of the way of it. But this is all you really need to do. Just kind of stay towards the middle and shoot upwards. Step out of the way if you have to, but you should be able to take care of most of the projectiles with your gun. It's not a very difficult boss, and with that, we're on to Stage 3. We're going to be moving on up in Stage 3, the Waterfall. But be careful if you drop down and don't land on a platform, you will lose a life. Up here you can get the F gun if you don't already have the spread. The wider attack pattern on that weapon will be good against the basic enemies here at the beginning of the stage, and we will be able to pick up a spread gun later, so there's not a major downside to using the fire in this early part. Take out this turret on the right side, and be cautious of the enemy soldiers that are pouring in from the sides. Up here there's two footballs. You want to get that second football to land up above, that B is an invincibility power-up called the Barrier. With the Barrier, we'll be invincible. Using it will make the rest of the stage fairly easy, but make sure to remove the turret on the left side before you jump over there. When you're flashing, you're invincible, so hurry up the right side. This is where the spread gun is, so if you don't have it already, make sure to pick it up. Head on up to the top here and take out this turret above. This is about where the bee will wear off. So make sure to clear those other turrets. And you can get a machine gun here if you don't have any better weapons. Carefully jump up. We are very close to the boss. You do want to be cautious on any of the platforms in this stage. If you hold down and press the jump button, you'll fall through. So you don't want to do that in a bad spot. Stay on the left side and we'll be fighting the shadow beast. You can just shoot upwards and you should be able to easily take out the left arm. Then we need to remove the right arm. Killing the right arm and the left arm is not mandatory, but it'll make it a lot easier to finish off the main part, which is the mouth, which we can do by standing off center, and if you jump up in the air, you'll kill it a little bit faster. The Shadow Beast is a bit more difficult with the regular gun. When you see the arm come out, jump up and start shooting so that you get some extra hits. And it will freeze in the air right in this position and you can finish off the left arm. Then you need to be very careful in taking out the right arm. I can't tell you how many times I've been killed trying to kill the stupid right arm. But once that arm is gone, you will be able to easily finish off the boss. So take it out when you can. And then you just want to stay right of center, right in this position and you'll be able to shoot it when the mouth opens, and it will not be able to hit you here. And that's it. We're on to Stage 4. Stage 4 is the second and the last of the bases. This time the gems are often protected by this barrier, which you'll need to shoot through. If you just have your standard gun, you can actually shoot through the barrier while you're crouching, but if you have the spread gun, you'll have to pop up to take it out. 
Once the barrier is removed, the gem will be revealed, and we can blow through this wall and go on to room number two. This time, there's four gems to clear. With the spread gun, you can take out the two in the middle first, and then take out the ones on the sides. If you just have the standard gun, you'll need to take them out one at a time. In the next room, there's going to be two barriers in the middle of the room, and we can use our spread gun to take them out at the same time, but if you just have the rifle, remember that you can destroy the barriers while you're crouching, so that's very important here. There is going to be a red enemy in this room that will drop a laser. The laser truly shines in the base areas. It can very quickly eradicate the gems in the wall, so if you don't have the spread gun, you may want to consider the laser. In this room, the gems are both on the lower level, so you can just stay crouched down and nothing will really damage you as you remove them. Head on up into the next room. The middle door reveals a turret, but on the left and right side is where the gems are. This enemy here will drop an R, so if you don't have Rapid already, you may want to pick that up. And that chime that we heard was an extra life. You do get extra lives in this game for every 20,000 points that you receive, up until you hit about 3 million. One gem to remove in this room, and you can actually see the mines in this one, which is interesting. In this room, the gem's in the top, so you need to jump and shoot at the very top of your jump to kill it. So, a few jumps and shots will take out that gem. And we'll move on to the next room, which is the one with the large gem in it. So, we can take out one of the turrets on the sides, and then if you stand right between the other two, you'll be able to quickly clear the large gem. And we'll be on to the boss. Just like the other base boss, we want to get rid of that spread turret in the middle before we get rid of the power cores, which will reveal the main boss. But this time we have to deal with these robot soldiers. The red ones will shoot at you, and the blue ones will jump at you. The main boss here has two heads, and you can only damage them when they're right on top of each other, so that you can only see two of them. Take out the one on the left, and then get rid of the one on the right, but you want to be constantly shooting so that you can get rid of those bubbles that it attacks you with, or you're going to have to jump over them. The bubbles are very dangerous projectiles, and you're going to realize that very quickly if you have to take this thing on with your standard gun. Same thing here, you want to make sure to get rid of that spread turret in the middle so that it won't cause us problems later but you need to be more cautious of the robot soldiers as it's a little bit more difficult to take out the turret this time. So clear that turret, watch out for the soldiers, and then hit those power cores. And then we need to get rid of the phantom image cores one at a time, but we need to be very careful about the bubbles. Try to shoot any bubbles that you see and prioritize shooting the bubbles or avoiding them. If you let too many bubbles get on the screen, it will get overwhelming, and you will almost definitely get killed. Alright, that was kind of bad there. You want to try to kill one of the heads as quickly as possible. It's a lot easier once one of them is gone. You can also jump in the air to try to get a few extra hits in when you're shooting. But you want to prioritize getting away from those bubbles. So shoot the bubbles when possible. Move around if you have to to shoot them. And eventually you will be able to beat this guy. Although you'll notice that, yes, it is much, much easier if you have the spread gun. Stage 5 is the snow field, and if you ever have a chance to try the Japanese version of Contra, this stage is way cooler with moving trees and actual snow and wind. Here you just need to avoid the explosions, and you can duck to take out that gunner. There's a machine gun power up here if you don't have anything better. And you'll want to duck to take out that guy, and if you have spread, you can easily kill this gunner from above, but if you don't, you just want to drop down and crouch to take him out. Up here, we can get a rapid enhancement, which will make that machine gun better if you had it earlier. And then we can try to avoid the bombs as we move forward here. We want to drop through this platform by holding down and pressing the jump button, but you want to make sure that you don't get shot by the gunner on the way down. You don't want this F because three footballs are about to fly through, and there's a spread and a rapid, so you can get right back in the game there if you had to. 
There's also the falcon icon, which will clear all the enemies on the screen, and you want to wait up here for this scuba soldier to fire, and then move forward, taking out any enemies on the lower ledge before jumping to it. Over here, we'll encounter our first heavily armored tank, and you just want to get up close and personal with this thing and rapidly shoot it by mashing the B button. If it starts to shoot at you, you may need to take one step backwards, but you just want to stay standing in front of it and mash the button as fast as possible. If you only have your standard rifle and you don't have the spread gun, it'll be a little bit harder to take this guy out, but you still should be able to defeat it. You just need to stand your ground and just keep rapidly attacking. It may seem like it's going to plow through you, but it'll turn dark red soon enough and you'll be able to blow it up. There's only one small strip of snow field left, so avoid the explosions and move forward here. If you don't have the spread gun, you may want to try the laser. There is an effective laser strategy for fighting the next boss, but you might be better off with your standard rifle. It's a little bit easier to use, so if you're not good with the laser, then just stick with what you got. And here it is, the anti-gravity transport. It appears in a random spot, and with the spread gun, you just want to jump right underneath it and rapidly mash the attack button. This thing will die so fast. If you try to use the laser, there's three rocket thrusters on the bottom of the boss. You want to attack the one on the right. So you're going to try to position yourself right under that right thruster and just try to shoot it with as many lasers as you can. You can't rapidly press the attack button with the laser. It won't shoot out. And you also don't want to jump. If you jump for some reason, the laser will go through the boss. If you're about to get hit by those enemies, you should try to jump. But if you just stand your ground, you can defeat it in one cycle with the laser. If you just have your regular rifle, no big deal. Just try to get underneath it. You are going to have to try to avoid the robots that it drops this time. So just focus on that when they get close. And whenever it comes in the lower tier, you can just stand below and fire. And you should be able to defeat it in two cycles without a lot of hassle. And that's it. We're on to stage six. Stage six, the energy zone, is the most difficult level in the game. Jump up here and take out that sniper. The power up below is a machine gun if you don't have anything better. It may be nice to not have to mash the button here. Duck down to take out that gunner and then jump across. On this side there's another gunner. And if you don't have the spread gun, you want to drop down to the middle platform here. But if you do have it, you can try to advance the screen a bit and make that sniper soldier appear when you can take him out and then duck down and take out the gunner. Otherwise, you want to try to get to the lower tier as soon as possible and duck down to take out the gunner, but watch out for the enemy soldiers that'll pour in behind you. Pause here and wait for the fire and then jump across. That's a tricky jump to make, but it's way easier than trying to jump through at the top. That fire won't hit you there, but this one will, so you need to get underneath it. And once it fires, you should be able to jump up all three tiers very easily. So just jump, 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 over here, jump, jump, jump. And this is tricky, you want to take out that sniper, and you want to watch out for this fire. So stay here and reveal that B, and you can jump over the fire there. Now if you don't have spread gun, you need to do your best to stay on the edge there and reveal the B and you'll get it the same way. You need the B. It makes this part so much easier. You can just run through everything, and if you don't have spread gun, you need it more than ever. You want to drop down through that platform so you don't get hit by that fire, and make your way to the end here. This may be the most difficult boss in the game, the Armored Giant, also known as Jumpin' Joey. If you can get close to this guy, you can duck under the discs that he throws, but if he starts walking towards you, you're going to need to jump over him, and if you're pretty close to him, well, it can be hard to react that quickly. You might die on this guy, it's just something that could happen. If you have your standard gun, I recommend staying farther away and trying to jump over the discs, and whenever he starts walking towards you, make sure to jump on over him. If he's bouncing, there's a good chance that he'll throw the discs, and he can throw up to three of them in one barrage. 
which can be very difficult if he throws the third disc. You need to make sure you jump a second time to get over it. It's pretty easy to get over two discs, but you need to make sure you jump again in case there's a third. And that's it. We've beaten the most difficult stage in the game. That doesn't mean that stage 7, the hangar, is easy. If you wait for that first claw to retract, you can just hold right and walk past all of them. There's an F there if you want it, and you can take this minecar and jump to this ledge where you can easily remove the gunner and avoid all those claws. You can actually jump on top of those spiked walls, but it's much safer to just drop right in front of them and shoot them out with your gun. Shoot through these walls, and on the other side you can take either the top or the bottom, but if you go on the top, there are two spiky walls up there. One in the front and one behind the third claw. So make sure to watch out for them. Down here, you want to jump from this minecar up onto that next ledge, and get this very important barrier power up. As soon as you get it, hold down and press jump to drop through the floor, and then run to the right. Run as fast as you can, avoiding all of these obstacles. There's a machine gun up there that you definitely don't need, because on the other side here, there's going to be another football, which is coming our way, which has a spread gun in it, if you don't have one already. Up here, your barrier will wear off, and you need to shoot through these three spiky walls. Drop down here and duck to avoid fire from the enemies. And here, we need to slowly walk one step at a time to get past these claws, and make sure to shoot out the wall at the end. There's going to be several gunners here that pop up, so be ready to duck and avoid them. You don't want to be surprised and get shot. There's more gunners up here too, so watch out for them. There's another one. Continue forward, and here's the boss. This boss, the door guard, super easy. Just jump towards it, firing, and then just shoot at a 45 degree angle into the weak point above the door. It will go down super fast. If you only have the regular rifle, same thing. Just get up in it and mash the button as fast as you can. Don't worry about any of that other stuff coming up behind you, because we're moving on to stage 8. We've done it. We've made it to the alien's lair, the final stage. There is a barrier power up here that you definitely want to grab, because there's going to be a mini boss over here. With the invincibility, we'll be able to defeat it so quickly. Even if you have your standard rifle, you just want to shoot at a 45 degree angle up into that alien's face, and you can jump to be able to clear it a little bit more quickly. On the other side, there's these alien mouths that shoot these white cotton ball looking things that would home in at you and are very dangerous. There's another spread there. If you don't have one, it's the last opportunity to get a spread gun. And as you come through here, I like to just kill everything. It'll just keep you safe. Any of those white cotton ball projectiles can also be shot out with your gun. So just take out everything, stay on the top up here. That'll make it easier to get across. You don't want to fall into that nuclear lava or whatever that is. And head off to the right. We are almost to the boss, the heart of the Falcon. Clear these enemies and watch out for the alien face huggers that'll start running at you from the right. Take out any of those that you see. And here it is, the heart of the Falcon. Just get up close and personal with it, aim up at a 45 degree angle and mash that attack button. This guy will go down fast. And we've done it. We've beaten Contra. The island blows up for some reason, I don't know exactly why that happens. I mean, I guess without the heart there, the there was a self-destruct thing. And we've defeated the vile red falcon and saved the universe. Consider yourself a hero. Now I wanted to show you the standard rifle method on the Japanese version so you could see how cool the animated background is here. But it's basically the same strategy. You just want to get up close to the heart and attack it as fast as possible. Sometimes those aliens from the top might try to drop down on you and you may need to move out of the way, but if you have a few lives, you should be able to shoot right into the heart and blow it up. 
And now we can see the Japanese version ending, which is a good bit different from the one in the North American version. We see this cool escape in the helicopter. And after that, we'll see that island exploding again. The same graphic that we saw before, but this time there's no message afterwards. It's just time to roll the credits. The Japanese version even has one more secret. If you hold down the start and select buttons throughout the entire credit roll, at the very end, a secret message will appear in Japanese that basically says we didn't completely defeat the Red Falcon and that they would be back for revenge. Pretty cool. Well, I hope this video was able to help you finally beat Contra and put an end to the threat of the evil Red Falcon. If it did, make sure to give it a like and make sure to subscribe for more videos because there will always be more extraterrestrial problems that can only be solved by bullets. And that's why we'll be back again next week with another video game you can beat. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.